If you're like me, you probably have an endless stream of ideas coming out of your head, but you don't seem to have the ability to follow through with them. And that can leave you feeling like a bit of a loser because you never manage to finish a project. Well, if it is you, you are definitely not alone in this, especially not if, like me, you have ADHD. This is something that I've struggled with pretty much all of my life. And even though I'm now fully aware of it, I still find myself falling into the same old patterns of behavior, having a whole ton of ideas, diving straight in and never actually completing them. So today I want to share three things with you that if we remember to do them can absolutely make a difference and help us to manage all of those ideas or actually taking those ideas and finding a way to make sure we follow through. I will just say though, the key here is remembering to do them because even though I know them, I still find that if I'm not consciously aware and thinking about these things, they all go out the window. Hi, I'm Bev. I'm a postmenopausal Gen X woman with late diagnosed ADHD, and I am 100% guilty of having an endless stream of ideas and regularly <laughs> failing to follow through on them. I overcommit and I end up running out of energy, running out of time, or just basically losing interest. I think this is a really common problem for those of us with ADHD. I'm fairly certain it's probably a problem for people without ADHD as well from time to time, but for me, this has definitely been a continuous recurring pattern in my life. And in actual fact, Part of the reason I wanted to make this video today is because I'm right smack bang in the middle of exactly the scenario that highlights this problem so well. I decided as an impulsive idea to join the Vlogtober bandwagon, which is basically committing to recording a video every day throughout the whole of the month of October with the hashtag Vlogtober um, as part of bringing in the autumn or the fall if you're across the pond and giving a bit of commitment to our YouTube channels. Now, the irony here <laughs> is that less than three weeks ago, I posted a, this video explaining why I won't do 30 day challenges. And yet here I am, not even three weeks later, breaking my own rules. So what the heck is going on? Well, before I get to the three things that I think can really help us to manage this, let me just backpedal for a moment and give you a little bit of context here. I think when it comes to ideas, my brain is, it's, a, it's like it's split in two. It's like I have a Jekyll and a Hyde in my head. And I have one side, the Dr. Jekyll, who is full of great ideas and has, you know, endless amounts of innovation and is massively curious and, and wants to do all of the things. This is my idea generating side of my brain, my Dr. Jekyll. My Mr. Hyde, unfortunately, is the flip side of that. And Mr. Hyde is my reality. And my reality is generally, I don't have the energy, I have too much self-doubt about getting this done, I don't have capacity, I've overcommitted, what was I thinking? <laughs> so I don't know if you can relate to this, but between Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde going on in my head, it's like a sine wave ideas, reality, ideas, reality, ideas, reality, which actually for me looks like high energy, crash and burn, high energy, crash and burn. And it's a pattern that I've repeated so, so often throughout my life. So going back to Vlogtober, I woke up one morning, I think it was the 2nd of October, so I was a day late, and I saw one of my creator colleagues doing Vlogtober, hadn't even heard of it before. 
And I thought, wow, this sounds like a good idea, especially since it's Menopause Awareness Month and it's ADHD Awareness Month. And I thought this would be great. And I got my trusty journal out and I wrote, and I'm going to tell you what I wrote verbatim. So let me just go back to the day. Here we go. 2nd of October, this is what I wrote. I had a brilliant idea this morning and it feels like the stars have aligned. I've heard of people talking about Vlogtober on YouTube where creators post every day as we transition into autumn. It's also Menopause Awareness Month, ADHD Awareness Month, and it marks the beginning of autumn. What a great analogy for this time in our lives. So I went ahead and I did a video yesterday all about the autumn years. <sighs> Another great idea that took me a long time to do. Anyway, <laughs> so now I need to think about content for my vlogs and also think about how I'm going to edit and publish a video every day. Notice here, there is nothing in this journal that says, but then it's only two of it weeks since you decided to make a video saying you would never do a 30 day challenge. There's nothing in here that says that. I then went on to write a big long list of all the things I could cover and not a single thing in there about, okay, so how am I actually going to make this work? I've already said that making a video a day in the other video is too much. I've also not taken into consideration that October is my most busy month of the year. The vast majority of my work happens in Menopause Awareness Month. I still do some corporate work around the menopause uh, awareness in the workplace and most of them want something in October. On top of that, next week, because World Menopause Day is the 18th of October, if you didn't know that, which is a week on Friday, as I'm making this video now. Not only is October my busiest month, but that week, the week of World Menopause Day, is so busy. I literally have training delivery every single day next week. On top of that this year, I'm running workshops that aren't in my normal repertoire, if you like. So I'm having to spend quite a bit of time planning, designing, creating, preparing the workshops for next week. And I'm doing that this week. There's not a mention of that in my journal. There's nothing in there at all that says, you're going to struggle to do this. Because in my brain, let me just get back to my notes for today. It's out of sight, out of mind. When I'm in my Dr. Jekyll phase, it's like I'm completely blinkered to anything else I've got going on in life. I just don't see it. It's not even, even that I don't consider it, it's that it doesn't even cross my mind. It's like reality just kind of gets hidden behind a huge rock where it's out of sight, out of mind. When I'm in idea mode, my energy levels are up here. I'm buzzing. I, you know, I could take on the world <laughs> and generally I think I probably try to. It's not even like my glass is half full when I'm in the Dr. Jekyll mode. It's like my glass is overflowing. <laughs> there is so much optimism and a ridiculous amount of belief that I can do all of the things. As you can see, I make notes, I make lists, I draw out plans, I write everything out, I get all of these ideas that spark other ideas and I'm buzzing, I'm rocking. And I get started and I can do this for a period of time. <laughs> that period of time varies depending on the level of interest. It depends on anything else that does crop up that I suddenly realize I have to do. I have this kind of confirmation bias that conveniently masks off all of the questions around can I actually achieve these ideas? Can I actually make them happen and commit to them? And although I write everything down and I have lots of lists, I don't really sit down and plan what I'm going to do. I dive straight in, that impulsive 
Oh, let's get this started. I am very, very good at starting things. Most things. If I'm interested, I'm very, very good at starting things. When I'm in Dr. Jekyll mode, it's like I channel my inner superwoman. I honestly think I can do everything and anything. And I don't have any questions in my mind. I don't have self-doubt. I don't have imposter syndrome. I don't have capacity issues because I think I can do it all. I have no concept of time or time commitment. But then what happens? A short way into this mad dash to get everything done, Mr. Hyde jumps in and gives me a bloody big reality smack across the face. And that normally shows up as feeling anxious, feeling overwhelmed, working way, way, way too many hours, working into the morning, you know, one, two o'clock in the morning, still trying to get the work done. It's like that unbridled confidence of my superwoman. It's like the kryptonite, the dopamine kryptonite comes in with a vengeance to take away all my superpowers. And that overwhelm of having bitten off more than I can chew really does come back to bite me. I realise that there just simply aren't enough hours in the day to do all of the things that I've committed to doing. And the reality is I find that I then have a conflict, massive conflict between the things I know I need to do, which is preparing and, and putting the effort and the time and the energy into my clients' needs and wanting to do the things that I've perhaps made a commitment to, like these YouTube videos. And that just amplifies the anxiety. And then I end up with this huge, like, monkey brain chit-chat going on. If you've read The, the Chimp Par Paradox, you'll know what I'm talking about. This inner head chatter. It's like my chimp is literally bouncing around its cage, literally like a caged animal trying to get out. Because emotionally, I've bitten off way, way more than I can chew. My unconscious mind is confused. And it is exhausting. And I go back to this energy dip and I get back to Mr. Hyde's reality check. And then I end up with the voice in my head going, you've done it again. What a loser. What a blooming failure. What is, why do you keep doing this? You're so, oh, you know, I don't need to go there. You know all the negative self-talk that we have. At which point my inner chimp finally admits defeat gives in to Mr. Hyde and says, enough is enough. So where am I at with Vlogtober? Well, the truth is, I don't know. I don't know that it's doing my channel a huge amount of good anyway. Uh, my numbers have fallen and I think it's perhaps because in trying to turn out a piece of content every day, it's not that great quality. You know, hand on heart, hands up, whatever the saying might be, I know I'm not putting out my best work. I know I'm not. And yet I've made this commitment to myself, to you guys, like you care. I'm sure you don't. But in my mind, I've made this commitment and now there's pressure to do it. So I'm not saying I'm not going to do Vlogtober. I think I will. I'm just not convinced I'm going to do a video every single day. And I don't think I can possibly do that next week anyway, because I've got so much work on. So anyway, let's get back to the three things that actually do help. And when I, when I do them, they really do make a difference. So I'm going to share them because as much as anything, I need to remind myself of how useful these tips are. And hopefully maybe it'll help you as well if you've related to anything at all that I've spoken about today. So tip number one is to do what I've done here, to get a journal and write the ideas down. Now, you might be thinking, well, you did that, they didn't stop you, and you are 100% right. But often what I will do is I will just write the ideas down and I will get them out of my head and onto the paper. But here is the big thing that you have to do 
that I didn't do. Wait 48 hours. Commit to giving yourself 48 hours to sit with the ideas before you act on them. This is the bit that I didn't do last time. And the reason I didn't is because it was the 2nd of October. And in my mind, I was thinking, oh, I've got to get going. I've got to get going. Otherwise, if I wait, well, I don't even think I consciously thought this, but you know, the reality was if I waited, I was going to be on the 3rd or 4th of October and I'd have missed more days. I'd already missed one. So my ADHD brain and my inner monkey, my chimp brain, my Dr. Jekyll, I don't know how many analogies I can use for that. Um, it was, you know, it wasn't even going there. It needed to happen right now because we were already a day into Vlogtober. So the best thing I could have done and possibly should have done was to write the idea down, capture it, because, you know, at the end of the day, it was probably a good idea, but leave it there for 48 hours. And in leaving it, when I came back to it, I'd have had time to kind of come down off that Dr. Jekyll high and look at it more rationally and being able to say, well, actually, yeah, it's a great idea. Why not leave this for next year where you can perhaps put more time into pre-planning it, pre uh, preparing more videos in advance. So when it does get busy in October, you're not trying to do everything at once. That would have made a lot more sense. So that's my first tip is to write your idea down and then importantly, don't go back to it for 48 hours. And then once you go back to it with a rational, more uh, realistic head on, you can say, you know, is this actually going to work for me? My second tip is to have a trusted sounding board, whether that's a coach or a, a, a friend or your partner or somebody who you can share your idea with. Now, their job isn't to tell you whether you should or shouldn't go ahead with the idea. That, that's not their role. Ultimately, this is your choice. But what that sounding board does is it gives you the opportunity to vocalize your idea and they're likely to be able to say to you, well, that sounds good. Have you got the capacity to do that? So do you remember I said earlier, it was like when I get into that Dr. Jekyll phase, it's like I've got a hood over my head or I'm wearing uh, blinkers or blinders, I think you call them across the pond. It's like I can't see all of the questions to ask myself. So having a sounding board, having somebody who can ask you those questions, you know, have you thought about all the work that you've got on? Have you thought about how you're going to do this? Have you considered if you've got enough content? Have you considered if this is going to do your channel any good? I mean, obviously, these are questions for these ideas, but you know where I'm going. You know, whatever the idea is, having that objective, different perspective reflecting back at you, your ideas can be so, so useful. You know, I have a few business buddies that I will go and I will just share an idea with. I am building a, a community of other creators. And with hindsight, what I should have done was go to some of my creator friends and say, look, I've had this idea that I want to do Vlogtober. Have you done it before? What are the pit, you know, pitfalls? Can you just let me talk, talk this through with you? And it would have made a huge difference because I'm fairly certain, I mean, they didn't, they wouldn't know my work schedule, but they could have asked me the question, what else have you got on? You know, is this the best time for you? How committed can you afford to be? And it's just, again, creating that, almost that pattern interrupt, that um, sense check. And having somebody else objectively do that for you, absolutely essential, really. And I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. Like I said earlier, these tips work, but you have to do them. Okay, tip number three is to do a mock time block. So I block out my time in my diary each week for different tasks anyway. That is part of my productivity strategy, if you like. So I use Google Calendar and I have all of my uh, sort of existing 
commitments in there and then I block out time for the things that I want to get done that week. Now I have to tell you I didn't do this, I haven't done this for the last couple of weeks and it is showing, it is really showing up. So when I do a time block, normally it's not a mock block, <laughs> it's the real block. So on a Sunday evening, normally what I'll do is sit and look at what I've got on and I'll time block out my calendar. And time blocking, if you're not aware of what that is, it's just literally allocating blocks of time to specific tasks or types of tasks and then having them blocked out, including things like blocking out time for self-care, you know, going to the gym, going for a walk, having lunch, meeting a friend, whatever it might be. And then any standing commitments like client calls or client uh, trainings or anything that I need to do or hairdressers appointments or nail appointments or whatever it is that's sort of non-negotiable. And then you look at how much space you've got outside of those non-negotiable blocks and you slot in the work that you need to do. That's you know, something I do generally pretty religiously, but not for the last couple of weeks. And I didn't do it. So the idea of a mock block is when you have these Dr. Jekyll moments and you've got all of these ideas and you're wanting to go ahead with it, do a mock time block. Because if I'd have done that and had a look at the month of October, I would have realized very, very quickly that I needed 48 hours in every day, let alone 24, just to be able to get everything fitted in. I'd have been able to see that I had a huge amount of work commitments next week, therefore creating videos wasn't gonna fit in. And that would have given me that rational, logical, kind of realistic look at my capacity, but I didn't do it. <laughs> Uh, so all three, I have big red crosses against these three tips. And I believe if I had taken the time to put these into place, to write everything down and leave it for 48 hours, to sound it off you know, with a, with a trusted friend or a coach and to do a mock time block, I'd have been so much more informed about the fact that this is simply too much, too much. Anyway, I hope that was useful. And, you know, let me know in the comments if you relate to this. And if you do, what are your strategies for managing your Dr. Jekyll? Because, you know, ideas are great. And I think it's one of the superpowers of ADHD is having a brain Oh my word, there's the most beautiful heron. I'm going to turn the camera around and hope you can see it. I don't know if you can see up on the roof there. Can you see him? <gasps> Good job we don't have any fish in a pond. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> oh, ADHD distraction. There you go. So let me know what your strategies are and, you know, don't, don't, suppress all those ideas. It's one of our superpowers. We don't want to get rid of that, but we do need to just learn to manage them a little bit better, or at least I do anyway. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>